Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Slaying 101 here on Game Nights. I am your keeper of monsters, your monster of ceremonies, and your general disaster savvy, and uh, we're here to play a game today. But before we do that, um, I definitely just had this moment in my brain where I said, did I say the name of the right show? <laughs> I think I did. Watch it's been a day. long week, everyone. It's all good. Uh, we're going to do some announcements real quick. Um, this week, because we have some fun, fun stuff coming up on the channel this week. I'm looking at my calendar so I don't fuck it up. Uh, on Thursday of this week, we are having a back-to-back -back episode of All Myths Are True, because we're shifting our schedule a little bit. Um, after this, it's going to go bi-weekly again. Um, but this is going to be the finale of this uh, first arc that we are doing. So look forward to that. Um, there are some serious, creepy shenanigans going on. Um, and it's been really, really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and after this, we're going to be switching it up a little bit on Thursdays. And we're not going to be playing Monster of the Week. We're going to be playing Tales from the Loop. Um, so that's going to be really fun. Really looking forward to that. Um, that's in a couple weeks on Saturday. We have a, another episode of Saturday Nights in which we play D&D. &D. Um, and we're coming to the end of that story as well. And things are getting wild on Saturdays. Um, so come join us for that as well. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. And then on Sunday, a week from today, at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we are going to have our premiere episode of our brand new show, our Pathfinder 2E miniseries, The Pursuit of the Black Kestrel. Um, I'll be there. Sean's running it. Um, there are going to be some friendly faces from, well, she's not here today, but LB will be there as well. Um, a couple of faces from our other streams and then uh, a couple of new friends as well. We're going to be playing Pathfinder. Um, some of us have never played second edition. Some of us have never played Pathfinder at all. And it's going to be awesome. So come uh, check that out next Sunday. Um, it's going to be alternating Sundays from this show. Um, and then after that, you know, stuff and things are gonna happen and it's gonna be great. Um, if you did not take notes for the quiz later, um, you can check out our schedule. Um, if you're watching this live on Twitch below, our faces on the drop page, um, our, all our regularly scheduled stuff is there, um, as well as on our Twitter and in our Discord, which you can click the Discord button down below and join and talk to us about um, all kinds of stuff, including our shows and other weird stuff. We've been talking about a lot of weird stuff lately. <laughs> But that's okay. Um, let's see. I think that's it on my end. Um, I'm going to let these fine people uh, who are better at introducing things than I am uh, tell you who they are and who they're playing and uh, what kind of fun stuff they've got going on. Who's first? It's GB. Hey, Greybeard or Greybeard Stavern, and uh, check my Twitter. I do have to update my schedule there because I got new seasons of things going on, and uh, still uh, probably going to put one more show in, but uh, generally you can find me over on Indoor Adventures in chat on uh, Mondays and oh, Tuesdays. No. We lost a tragedy Rob. Yeah. has befallen us. We lost Rob and Frozen for a bit. Um, uh. So... Uh, uh, let's uh, just keep going with the announcements. Can we keep talking? Right. Yeah, Soldier. keep talking. I'll fix it. <laughs> um, so then I guess uh, usually I truncate because I've usually got so much going on. But uh, uh, but I'll go through. And uh, Wednesdays, I currently have nothing. Thursdays, second season of Death's Curios is back over on in Encounter Roleplay. And uh, where I play Dr. Varut. Uh, the mad scientist, and in our Christmas episode, Dr. Veruk got a new uh, prosthetic arm. Uh, it's all steampunk zombie apocalypse with vampires, so that shows uh, amazing, uh, just nutty, just very nutty. Um, and then every other Friday, Ghost of Salt Marsh on Damn It Berry's channel. I've been playing over on the Hype Goblins channel on Sunday mornings as a guest, but like a seven episode guest, where I am playing Jean Jean the Jongleur uh, in a D and D game of theirs. Um, I think that's it right now. Hmm. 
next. Okay. Excellent. Um, who's next? Sid, it's you. It's me. Hi, I'm Christy Sid. Uh, I sound horrible. I apologize. Um, <laughs> just getting that out of the way right now. Uh, I uh, will be back with, uh, let's see, let's look to the calendar so I get all this right. We are switching our bi-weekly. Uh, we're on Fem NPC, so we will not be having a game tomorrow. We'll have one on the 13th. Excellent. That's 10 o'clock Eastern over on Fem NPC. We're we're just continually just kicking uh, kicking Peter Pan's ass. That's that's the plan. He's terrible. We hate him. It's it's going down. Uh, then we're coming back with Tidefall next Wednesday the fifteenth. It'll be here. Yay! Awesome people. That'll be fun. Uh, and then starting in February, I'm gonna be over on uh, Pro Research Channel. I think that starts February eighth on Saturday mornings for me. Not for him, but for me, it's it's, it's in the mornings. I'll have more info on that later, but we're playing in Teldore, which will be a lot of fun and for any of you, uh, you, you Crit Roll fans, uh, Teldore setting. So that'll be good. Uh, today I'm playing a very stuffed up Sally the Monstrous. So it'll, it'll, be, it'll be dope and we really, really will try not to blow things up. I'll be sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Rob, you're back. You're hey. not, the right, not in the right spot, but you're back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh, boy. <clears throat> is it my turn? It is your turn. Just oh, in time. boy. Can I, can I get uh, GB just to toggle his camera on and up back off really quick? <laughs> I was just going to say, do we need to do the shuffle thing? Yeah, yeah, I... just real quick. Oh, you keep, good you thing, keep going. Good thing my, going. My, my camera settings are forked now, too. I'm so washed out. Oh well, I'll, I'll I'll sort that out. Uh, my neck, my back, my computer fucking crashed. It's me, Rob. Hey, how's it going? It's it's your boy. Um, Savvy said she's general disaster. Well, I'm Lieutenant Mayhem. I don't know, man. Uh, hello, I'm Rob. Your bonus stage, Rob, on all the things. You can find me at Twitch.tv/bonus underscore stage underscore Rob, uh, where I stream. You know, eventually. 2020 baby big return who knows when uh not me never me um but i'm here uh and i am also on uh twitch.tv slash runaway robot with an underscore after that uh usually on thursdays at 7 p.m eastern for a humblewood campaign uh, uh fifth edition D D set in the 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 crowdfunded humblewood campaign setting uh, I believe our next show is actually, huh? I don't know when. <laughs> okay. Well, Robo hasn't updated his schedule in a while. Uh, it's it's sometime eventually soon. It's, just look look for it, man. Follow that channel. Follow follow me. Follow these people. Follow everybody. It, oh, it, I'm doing. I was so glad you brought it up because I was like, I thought you were gonna skip it. I'm like, you, you that game's so good. Don't nah, man. Humblewood, man. Uh, here I am. I, I play. I play <laughs> hedgehog, youth minister cleric. It's dope. That's um, very good content. I, I love him. He's so wonderful. Is this the thing that'll fix my light? Nope. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going with camera settings. GP, please save me. It's not me, it's Kraken King. Oh yeah. god, Sean, save me. I forgot what the, I'm looking at the wrong order here. It's all right. Uh, hey, I'm uh, Sean at the Kraken King on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. Uh, most of the stuff that I would cover has been covered by Savannah. Uh, so I'll just say, come check us out on uh, Thursday for our finale, uh, where I'm playing Savannah's game of All Miss Are True, and then the premiere of uh, Pathfinder, once again. Uh, plug that, even though probably don't want to watch it because i've never run a pathfinder game before uh run lots of D, &D should definitely though, so. watch it yeah um it's it's gonna be a, a hoot and a half um oh and then we're gearing up for after we finish up saturday nights so we're gonna be starting a new game uh at the beginning of february uh in its place continuing saturday nights uh but we'll be uh returning for saturday night's thunderball um which is going to be a uh, a fun game. We'll talk more about it as we get closer, but it's going to be sporting related. So uh, come check that out. I'm so excited for that. 
and for all of these other wonderful things that you people are doing. So yeah, follow these fools. They're awesome. They do great stuff. Watch their stuff. Um, but for right now, let us play a game. Let's play some Monster of the Week. Um, last time on uh, Slaying 101, a lot of things happened. Uh, some of them went great. Some of them went horribly wrong, depending on your perspective, I think. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, last time, the group of you managed to successfully summon the demon Angula um, and uh, make a deal with her. Um, Rex taking the lead on that, uh, much to the chagrin of the rest of their teammates, especially those teammates that they uh, tased in the back to do so. <laughs> but it's all good. We're all friends here. Um, but handing over, I believe, a fake version of the book that she wanted um, in exchange for uh, information on how to lift Destiny's Curse and a promise that she would leave your town of Cedar Grove alone. We'll see where that goes. Um, in addition to that, shortly after, Sally was contacted by her dear old mom, uh, instructing her to uh, kill Angula and Destiny. Um, so that is in the mix as well. Um, Travis had a creepy dream in which uh, he was visited by Selena. Um, who did not say what she was, but claimed to inhabit the skeleton key that he has in his possession. Um, she's deemed him competent after uh, he was able to actually lock something with an artifact meant to unlock um, and instructed him to try to summon her in his waking hours and unlock the full potential of this key. And Wynn went on a date which I think was overall pretty successful, um, except for the part where he was confronted by his classmate, Bibi, who had a meltdown uh, in the middle of a restaurant and accused him of treating his friends poorly. And uh, I think we ended with uh, you all making a plan to try to, instead of uh, killing Destiny, who has been turned into a Striga and is on the verge of having that transformation become permanent, um, a plan to use the information Angula gave you to try to turn her back. So I'm gonna put on the mystery music. What would you like to do? All right, we had that list of ingredients, right? Yeah, I, I think. More of a riddle, really, but you know. Yeah. We'll work with what we got. Because we got the blood. Mm hmm. And we just need wood. And then mix under the moonlight. Drink is needed, is what I have, essentially. <laughs> Would it? Did I post the actual text of that for you guys? No. No. Should I, have done that. I was gonna say I just oh, looked. Cool. I was like, didn't we post this? Boop. Roll twenty. Go. Cool. Did forget that probably would have been very helpful. <clears throat> Win uses a psychic like, memory to recall I like, everything. Uh, <laughs> I like Win's version of it though. <laughs> Drink as needed. <laughs> It's how I like to go through life, really. But no, anyway. Um. <laughs> I I only have the chat up for the stream. Can they see this, or should we read it out? Uh, uh like, no. Yeah, they can't see it, so we can read it to recap. Okay. Uh, uh, do it. Go for it. It was your idea. Oh, okay. Uh, blessed to purify at first touch, drenched redder under the moon by the lifeblood of the curse. The dregs will quench her thirst. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, juniper wood with uh, wood of red. Ah, uh, see, I missed the line. That's the first line. <laughs> we got our uh, non chronological telling. It's of like the... memento. <laughs> yeah, yeah <you> know? exactly. <laughs> it yeah. keeps you on your toes. <laughs> it's fine, dude. Uh, 
So we can just do this tonight, right? I mean, it doesn't say a specific mood. We can just knock this, this is out. Blessed to purify at first touch. Do we know what that means? I think we need to bless the the wood, um, and then I, I don't know under what denomination it needs to be blessed, though. Hmm. Am I the only one that feels like we got a raw deal here? Like, this could blow up in our face. Yeah, I mean, we did give her a fake version, or the uh, purified version of the Well, yeah, but, like, she book, didn't so. know that. Well, she's gonna know that, like, real soon. Well, I suppose it won't matter if this, you know, the red is the wrong shade and we die. Yeah. Or the moon is a half moon when it's supposed to be a full moon. <laughs> like, it's, there's just... I don't like this. This is too genie in a bottle, like not the fun song, but like the like monkey's paw sort of thing. Yeah. I don't like this. Uh... No. Rex has nothing. This is magic, so <laughs> we're just gonna have to give it a shot. I mean, this is the best we got now, and we made our choice to do what we did. So yeah, what's the worst that could go wrong, right? Uh, is uh, Davian still here, or did he bounce? Uh, we could say he's still here because I don't remember. Because <laughs> I think he'd be the only one to I could ask this question out of the group. Uh, Davian, do you know anyone that could bless a juniper branch? Uh, I we are being trolled by LB in chat. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> She's I'm... absolutely right, but we're still being trolled. <laughs> oh, I can't see your messages. Why you do this to me? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, you guys need help. And I'm like, we're down her expert. And then she's like, Savvy, please play Abby to help them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Abby's still here, right? Uh, Abby so... has received an urgent phone call and had to run Before home. you go, Abby, I have a quick question. <laughs> Text. <laughs> you have anything that might help blessing the juniper branch? You, you got, you got one lying around, maybe. Hey, you know a priest or something or a rabbi? I don't even know at this point. A shaman. I could pay someone to help us. That works too. You can bribe a priest. That's yeah. Awesome. Are you kidding me? Or just like order one off eBay. Not the priest, the branch. Oh, you you could just become a priest go? for like 30 bucks. Right. I know I a guy that did it. I have to go home. It's urgent. Um, but uh, you get the branch. I'm sure I can find some kind of prayer or something in my library. I'll send it to you. Everything all right, kid? Yeah. <laughs> well, be what? safe. Seriously, be safe. Like we we we've kind of pissed off a, a a demon, so just don't run into her. Maybe I'm keenly aware. And she runs away. <laughs> don't think that's what Abby sounds like at all. <laughs> no, it wasn't bad. That was close. It was pretty good. I bought it. I got the gist of it. So you know, Abby goes home. <laughs> Uh, all Where right. Does she? Bum, bum, bum. Well, so she's not going to be helping. Uh, what? What do we want to do then? <laughs> God, we really do need that. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the tech guy. If it was an AV issue as, or something. As the resident know. expert now on magical things, I'm just going to make a call. We're just going to deal with this ritual tonight, get it over with, move on. Right? All right, you're Hi. the boss. Let's okay. just swing by. I, you know what? Let's just grab a branch off the side of the road. I'm sure they're falling down from the trees and we just take it over to the church. Get I regret this it. already. We're just going to deal, deal with it. It's going to be fine. Right, Can Davian? you at least That's make sure the wood is red on it? Yeah. 
Rex is googling juniper tree. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no. <laughs> we we figured this out already, right? Because you did. See <laughs> see a grove, right? It's, yeah. It's the they're red like cedar. everywhere. <laughs> okay. So just like point. <laughs> just gonna walk outside. It's like there's one like right over there. I'll be right back. I jog over to a tree. I run over to the tree and literally just limp, rip like a limb of the tree off. <laughs> like that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it red? It, is it red? Uh, is it red it's enough? Reddish. <laughs> Can Rex through his googling identify Mostly this brown. as being a uh, an actual? Identify the tree? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it, I think that's fairly simple. Um, cedar Grove is named for its red cedar trees. Um, so it's right there in the name, um, which are aka junipers. All right. Thumbs up. <laughs> One down. So uh, uh, meet after sunset for the ritual. Oh, wait, don't we have to bless this thing? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I figured someone's going to take it over, get it blessed, and then we'll meet after. Uh, we could all go. You want to uh, go to church? Who wants to go to church? out the limb. You probably don't want me at a church. That is a good point. Uh, and I am banned from most religious establishments. It's a self-imposed exile. Those churches, they just love their shiny objects, and I know myself. All right, fair enough. So that just leaves Rex and I. She'll hand you the limb of the tree. With the bungee-corded <laughs> juniper branch to the back of my electric motorcycle, because we don't own a car. <laughs> so I guess that's, that's us. Yep. <laughs> Travis has a car now. Oh, yeah, I can drive you. I just won't go inside. That's fine. You just drop. I mean, I don't know what priests need with all that gold, but man, I cannot handle (laughs) it. It's like I lose control in there. I'll stay in the car with slips then. Look at us. So a couple of Trav drives. Where's everybody sitting? It's important to me as a player. They're not, you know, as Rex. You're in back for sure. <laughs> but not directly behind but the track. On the passenger <laughs> side. It's unspoken, but that is what Rob is communicating. I'll sit in the back with Rex, as I assume Sal is probably as an intimidating look if anyone else tries to take shotgun. Always. Nice. Okay, so you uh, load this, this branch um, into... Travis's car, uh, take your seats, and the four of you drive to, hmm, which church? This is Georgia. There are a few. First Methodist Church of Cedar Grove. I thought you meant there was literally a witch church, and I was like, wow, that's kind of progressive in Georgia, but okay, cool. Witch church. (laughs) It's very good. Um... You go to the Methodist Church. Which I'm writing down as existing now in this town. Um, fun choice. Okay. Um, so yeah, you pull up outside um, the brick building um, with a sort of steeple in front, white cross um, at the top, and uh, pull into the parking lot. Of the first Methodist, the first Methodist Church. You couldn't have picked an easier one to say. No, <laughs> this is the first Grove. thing that came to, that came to my um, mind. The first Methodist Church of Cedar Grove. So, uh, Travis, you pull into the parking lot near the front door. Um, Once across the bridge when we get to it. I, uh, as a, as a former. A recovering Catholic boy, I've actually have no point of reference as to whether Methodist, Methodist Church has like a ordained priest or they do like blessings or things like that. Atheist, I. <laughs> that it depends on the church. I was raised evangelical. I have no idea. 
I only know the Dead Milkman song. That's all I know about Methodists <laughs> right there. That's, that's it. Then we pop the... across the street to <laughs> Our Lady of the Sacred Heart <laughs> Tree. <laughs> Sacred Grove. I like Sacred Our Grove. Is there lady, a Sacred Grove? There is now. Our Lady of the Sacred Grove. Look, there's yeah. tree in the title. Let's do that one. Church. <laughs> Across the street. That makes there sense. Is a, uh, there's a similar uh, dark red brick building, <laughs> um, but uh, without the um, without the Protestant style steeple. Um, <laughs> we broke GP. <laughs> Oh, so man. you go to the Catholic Church instead? Yeah, because that's the only point of reference I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that seems fair. Oh, my God. <laughs> so then, then the frat boy and the Grim Reaper walk in with a tree <laughs> branch. Walk into the church. So a frat boy and a Grim Reaper walk into a Catholic church. church. <laughs> that's my favorite joke. So yes, uh, Travis and Sally wait in the car. <laughs> outside the most demon hating of churches um i i think because some of them love demons <laughs> some of them are so down with demons they're down to d uh, dtd i don't know if you guys have ever been to a pentecostal church but <laughs> there's some stuff going on in there um lots of snakes anyway you go into the uh the catholic church i don't remember what day i said it was but i'm gonna say i don't know there's no one there right now, really. It's not time for mass. It's not late enough in the day, I think, for there to be mass. I don't know when they have mass. So like a Tuesday um, <coughs> at like three. Yeah, there's no one there yet. Um, so you pull into the parking lot across the street and uh, Rex and Wynn, you take a branch and walk in to the to the Catholic Church. So you... Um, you sort of walk into the, uh, the sort of entrance way of this sort of older brick building um, with these white marble floors um, and another set of doors in front of you. So you're leading into the main, um, you know, the room where they do the church. I don't go to church <laughs> and all the words have completely gone out of my brain. Cathedral area, the, you know, where these are. Um, there's the a set of wooden doors, sort of <laughs> the inner sanctum of the church, <laughs> um, is what we're calling it. But there's a set of wooden doors uh, with glass sort of inset and then leading into there where uh, mass and, and services would be held. Um, and then hallways going either way. Um, there is a sign pointing you um, to the right, sort of down a hallway uh, where the offices and things would be. Uh, you want to just wait here for a minute? Big right. hood nod. <laughs> uh, I will. I'm going to leave Rex and the branch for right now because I want to ease the priest <laughs> into this uh, circumstance. Okay. Um, and I, <laughs> I head down the hall to, um, yeah, so like the, wherever the clerical offices would be for, uh, for the for the parish sure um so you head down the hall sort of coming around and through a um a wooden door that opens up into uh almost like a little reception area there's a like a desk with a, a phone a receptionist and everything and a couple of chairs and like a waiting area um and uh, the uh, the receptionist at the desk sort of looks up at you and um smiles and says Oh, uh, how can I help you? Ah, uh, um, I have to, uh, can I, is the, is the father in? I, I, I need to, I have a bit of an odd uh, situation and, uh, I need some help. Uh, well, and she kind of looks at the clock on her desk, um, and it's about like 315, 320, um, and she looks up and she says, well, uh, uh Father Donovan should be in at uh 3 30 so uh if you'd if you'd like to wait for a few minutes you can speak with him when he gets here sure yeah i, I can wait all right well have a seat uh would you like some coffee or anything uh no thank you i, I appreciate it and she goes back to what she was doing 
and you wait for uh, for a few minutes um, sitting there. I text everyone in like silence. subtly, <laughs> just like it's gonna be a few minutes. And Rex is uh, in the long coat with the hood and everything, sitting crisscross applesauce inside the transept or the the foyer, mm -hmm. and uh, with the branch like across their lap and just working on stuff on a phone or a tablet, one or the other. Okay. Um, so a few minutes pass, um, and uh, Rex, from <coughs> from behind you, uh, the, the main doors leading outside open, um, and coming through the door and looking sort of a little bit startled <laughs> to see you sitting there, um, you see... A, um, a a younger man um, in uh, in a jacket um, with a priest collar that you can see kind of poking out underneath. Oh, probably uh, like late thirties. Um, sort of walk through, um, like short cropped brown hair. Um, walk in and look. Uh, sort oh boy, of you just described like every priest startled. I've ever known. That's I know. Spooky. I only know a couple of priests, and they're also the ones that you know. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> But he, uh, he sort of walks in and looks startled and then kind of uh, collects himself and uh, stops next to you and says, uh, are you okay? <laughs> Rex thinks about it and then reaches into his coat pocket and grabs the, the thing he, the voice box that he uses occasionally to, mm -hmm. uh, particularly at, uh, at the, uh, our meeting, our group meeting. Mm -hmm. He pulls the voice box out and waves it and then sticks it under the hood and it's like, I'm waiting for someone. All right, well, um, great. Uh, if you need any help, the uh, the offices are, are right down here. Um, I, I'm sure Charlene would be happy to help you. He gives a big thumbs up <laughs> with black nitro gloves. <laughs> Okay, and he <laughs> walks away, <laughs> looking a little concerned, <laughs> but trying to be nice. And then um, a, a couple of minutes later, um, when you hear uh, footsteps kind of coming down the hall and into the office, you see this kind of younger priest um, walk in, sort of nod uh, towards you, and uh, the, uh, the woman at the desk, who I just named Charlene, um, sort of lets him know that you are here to see him so he is like taking his uh, coat off and everything and uh walks up to you and uh, kind of sticks out a hand to shake yours says uh i forgot what i called the uh, father donovan is that what i called him yeah <laughs> uh a uh, pleasure to meet you say uh hi um win crowley uh i'm a student at the university um i have a favor to ask i don't i don't i don't know how the I've never done anything like this before, and it's it's been a while since I've been to church. Um, uh, my friend and I have a well. He's out front, um, but we have a bit of a project. Is, um, is your friend the one in the? the yes, coat? yes. Um, right. Yeah, he's he's helped me. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it short. My <laughs> my uncle works. Um, he's he's a bit handy uh, and and likes to make. Um, like sculptures and things, and he's actually going to be making a uh, a series of, of uh, uh, crucifixes um, out of local woods that he scavenges around town. And uh, well, he's he's very religious, and he would like for the wood to be blessed before he starts his project, so that it sort of sanctifies the the whole thing. Um, is that something that you could do? Is is to to bless it. Uh, I'm gonna have you uh, roll to manipulate because you Man, lied hope... to a priest in the middle of a church. Uh, I did. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, that's charm plus charm. That's an eleven. It is. Uh, they do what you want. So uh, yeah, I think you. Um, he he sort of listens for. For a second, and a, and a smile kind of breaks across his face, and he says, "Of course, of course. I'm not, you know, I'm not the Pope by any means, um, but I can, uh, you know, bestow a blessing on uh, on a piece of wood. Um, 
thank you. I, I, I really appreciate it. And if we need to make a donation or, or anything like that, I, I will. I, like I said, I, I'm not really familiar how all this works. My, my uncle's the, the religious one. Uh, n no donation necessary, unless, of course, you wanted to. Um, you, I, you said you hadn't been to church in a while. Is your family Catholic? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I grew up um, in a, yeah, in in the in a church, and uh, it's just been a while, probably since I was a. Oh man, it must have been about ten last time I went to church. So it's been a long time. Well, we're we're glad to see you here. And he claps you on the shoulder and says, "You know, the the greatest donation would be seeing you here at mass." I'll I'll keep that in mind. So, um, I've I've got a few minutes. Just got in. We can we can do this now. All right. Uh, do you want me to bring him back here or go back out front or? Uh, let's let's go uh go back out front. We'll uh right. we'll go into the into the the main cathedral. Uh, and he's a he's a bit shy. Uh, just kind of a warning. Um, sometimes he kind of throws people off, but he's he's a good guy. That's okay. Rex texts you, burn victim. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, he yeah, he would have been listening on your phone. I guess that's how okay. he knows what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I lead him back out front. Okay. Um, so Rex, uh, after a couple more minutes, um, you see Wynn followed by um, the young priest uh, coming back down the hallway toward you. Um, and uh, he greets you and um, then goes and opens the doors uh, into the, uh, the main chapel area um, <coughs> and sort of leads you up to the, uh, the front and kind of side, kind of to a, a side room kind of off the cathedral. Um, bringing the branch with you. Um, he goes into uh, one of the cabinets and sort of, kind of uh, rummages through and pulls out um, a vial of holy water um, and sort of has you lay the branch down on uh, just a low table. Um, he uh, looks up before he uh, starts the blessing and just asks, is there anything particular? you would like me to say or uh, I think based on what, what he was telling me about his thoughts for this is he wants to be able to the, the project is for one of the local hospitals he's, he's making some of the uh, the crucifixes for them and so some sort of purifying or uh, something to, to help sort of cleanse the space okay um, and uh, he um, it bows his head for a moment, kind of says um, some words under his breath, um, and then takes the holy water and um, kind of drizzles it along the length of the branch. Um, I, I he's sort of muttering a lot of it under his breath. I don't know that you can kind of hear a lot of what he's saying. Um, and then some of it in English, some of it in Latin. Um, and then finally sort of says a, a final blessing, making the sign of the cross over it uh, and corks the vial and sets it down um, and says, there you go. About as as blessed as it can be. Thank you. I, he's really going to appreciate it. Um, I'll, I'll let him know. Uh, I'll let him know that you helped. And and, uh, and if he has any more projects, we'll, we'll most certainly be back and um, maybe I'll see you next Sunday. Uh... We'd love that. <laughs> and uh, you're... Uh, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't get your name. Um, Wynn's friend, but you're welcome as well. Big nod. Uh, and we leave awkwardly. Okay. Uh, so he hands you the branch and says, and uh, tell your uncle good luck with uh, with this project. I'd... I've always admired the woodworkers. Thank you. <laughs> and he chuckles a little bit to himself. Uh, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, oh, that was good. Uh, th thanks. Thanks, Father. 
little Jesus humor for you. This little Jesus right humor. No, That's no, actually that was a Jesus humor. That was a very good priest joke. <laughs> Hashtag priest joke. Um. Uh, if you have any priest jokes, please tweet them at us using the hashtag. Please priest don't. Joke. <laughs> no, please don't do the thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna the, do uh, it. <laughs> hashtag slang 101. Hashtag <laughs> priest joke. Family friendly yeah, priest joke. Yeah. Um, and the, the jokes made the, by uh, priests, not about priests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Jokes that priests would make. Uh, please tweet them at us. I would love to read those. Um, yeah. So uh, Father Donovan uh, sort of opens the door for you and uh, you leave. Yes. Um, I already forgot. I'm sorry. I paused because I forgot uh, the words I was going to say. Um, but you leave Our Lady of the Sacred Grove Catholic Church. Um, and uh, after just ooh, 20 minutes or so, um, Sal and Travis, you see uh, Wynn and Rex, the door held open for them by a uh, nice looking Catholic priest, um, exit the church with a branch. Um, the two of you that were in the car, is there anything you were doing in the meantime? Having a snack, taking a nap? In, I'm assuming that the church is a pokey stop, so probably putting a lure in there somewhere. It's um, definitely a pokey stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so evolving some Eevee, I would assume. Uh, and uh, and then what was, was Trav up to? Are you are you playing Pokemon? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just never pegged you for a Pokemon Go type. Well, the bar is a Pokestop, so it just kind of, you know. You don't play Pokemon Go? Mm, no. Mm. So we, mm. um, we kind of have to, to kill this bee. In in like the game, do you need me to download it? No, no. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh Angula. What's her name? Angula. Um. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So. I'm I'm like kind of unclear. Are are we involved in a demon turf war now? Mm. Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But uh, again, uh, the whole the whole like you know like deals thing. Um, I mean, it's really it's 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 really like it's think of it like a puzzle, you know? Like mm -hmm. you know you you have to like obey like the letter of it, but like pff, they're always gonna like go around and find like loopholes. So that's like the fun of it. You find like the loophole way around it so um like a lawyer yeah yeah i mean i mean we got a lot of those too so um we really gotta are you good with riddles brain puzzles word, uh, word, yeah word you know I, I think i can i i mean i know my way around a word play or two but yeah you know puzzles are fun they're they're interesting i like a good challenge i gotta it's... say I love the skeleton key here, but there's a part of me that always sort of hopes the door isn't magically sealed just so I can pick the lock. It's 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 fun to kind of figure. It's like my own Rubik's Cube, except the reward is usually an actual reward and not just the satisfaction of being a huge fucking nerd. That, that's... Or good with algorithms. I guess. I don't no think offense if you're a exclusive. Rubik's anyway. Cube person. Yeah. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say though is, um, can you, uh, <clears throat> help me get around the whole, like, we can't kill her thing? <laughs> yeah, totally. Easy. Okay. Probably. I don't know. All right. So we need to, uh, we need to, uh, yeah. How do we do that? I'm not good with these. Like I said, you know, they're so, fun, but I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, feed me the actual wording of this, like, contract, if you will. Okay, I think I think we 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 said that uh, she'd have to cure, and then 
we would let her leave here alive and we wouldn't kill her and then like maybe uh then she would have to leave i think and okay. not come back here we would let her leave without killing her yeah well there you go once she's left she's susceptible to death i mean that's outside of the contract right and if she has any problem with it, technically she did not give us the cure. She gave us the means to achieve the cure. So we can kind of, uh, uh, what, what's it called in um, in in court? I haven't been in a while. Uh, we can kind of like counterpoint her if she, like if point she, counter, yeah, 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 yeah. If she's like, oh, well, you said you weren't gonna kill me, and we said, yeah, well, you said you were gonna give us the cure. Boom. Well, but then I worry then she's going to just take her ball and go home and her ball is Rexy's soul. Hmm. Follow up question. Can the human body live without a soul? Well, yeah, but uh, you probably don't want it to. Yeah. Rex is a bastard, but they're my bastard, so. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 real sorry about the whole tasing tasing you thing. No, like, I, I was not down with that. I was like, me and Rex, we're like well, this, but I was I was, was not I. down with that. Just throwing that it's out. It's fine. If I'm being perfectly honest, I've been backstabbed before, so it didn't sit well with me. But I know that they did it because they wanted to protect me. Yeah. And it wasn't meant to backstab me. So I'm still a little sore about it, both physically and emotionally, but I'll get over with it. Yeah. I mean... Are 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 you down with like taking help taking care of care care of this one? What like killing a demon? Well, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty scary concept, but it'd be pretty good for street cred, I guess. I mean, you can like lead with that, like like I killed Travis, a demon. demon killer. Like, I mean, that's. Oh, I like. That. Oh, that's badass. I mean, that's like K Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly. I mean, just it's alliterative. It's, it's good. Stop it's it. Good. I am just, oh, this is, I love just it. Just saying. I love it. Oh, yeah, well, done. I mean, you're, oh. What? So you just like collect them? Well, yeah. But you gotta get all of them. So we're here. Hmm. I mean, it's not. Can you like steal them from people or? I think I got a new thing where like you can like you can like make friends with people and then like you can like battle them and and like. So you can trade. Yeah. It's not what the same, but I guess it'll have to do. All right. Travis is going to download Pokemon Go. Yes. And that is a sentence okay. I didn't think I was going to say today, <laughs> but here we are. Okay. So, uh, as this uh, conversation sort of comes to a close, um, Travis, you use the, uh, the church's Wi-Fi to <laughs> download Pokemon Go, I'm sure. <laughs> To uh, I guess attempt to you to see if you can steal Pokemon from other people. Um, but uh, roll to steal Pokemon, please. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, you download Pokemon Go um, and you uh, sit there for a couple minutes with Sal, sort of showing you how the game works after this calm little station. Um, as uh, 
uh, Father Donovan holds the door open for Wynne and Rex, and they uh, leave the church, a smiling priest sort of waving behind them with their blessed Juniper branch. Climb in the back seat, the branch across our laps. <laughs> All right. So, how'd it go? We're good. It's been blessed. How much that cost you? Nothing. Apparently, they don't charge for it. What? Seriously? Yeah. yeah. How do they buy all that gold? Donations. Yeah. I got into the wrong business. I mean, it's well, not too late. So the guy just... What did you... How did you get him to do that? I mean, was he bored? Uh, no, I told him that my uncle was going to be making some crosses. You and lied to him? You lied to a priest, huh? Straight up. And Rexy's I mean, soul's in danger, we thought. I mean, that's... What do you think would have happened if I had told him that we had made a deal with a demon to cure a striga and uh, we're going to be conducting a ritual under the moonlight involving the blood of said demon? Yeah, you may have a point. It yeah. does sound when you lay it all out like that, it sounds a little outlandish. Rex starts furiously texting, <laughs> typing, <laughs> and he's like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> maybe the the priest can help us. Wouldn't they be like honor bound or something to to help us fight a demon? Like totally straight from a comic book or something, you, you know?" <laughs> I feels more so like they would report us to the Pope or something for practicing demon summoning. I don't know how it works. And then what? The Pope police shows up? I don't know. Is that a thing? No, it's not. I don't know. <laughs> and Rex it's not a thing. God. Re Rex types the flight time from, from Italy to <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a thing. I guess. I well, guess the Vatican have could have some kind of the Vatican police. They could have some sort of anti-demon task force that they. Oh, that'd be badass! I would have become a priest. Could have people giving me gold. I could have been fighting demons this whole time. Someone's telling me you should just go ahead and go. <laughs> do this ceremony now. So. Yeah, I'm starting to think that without Abby here, we, we get a little... We get a little trend. unruly. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, she's yelled at us Abby's enough. Abby's voice in the back of her head. <laughs> she's like, yelled oh at us God, enough at this point. Please just go. <laughs> I know what she'd be saying, so she'd be telling us to go ahead and... Well, I guess we probably have a couple hours until moonlight, but... <laughs> well, okay, so like... So we've got... Juniper would have read Blessed the first touch. Wait, are we not supposed to be touching it? What's first touch? Rex Lots holds to up to purify their, it. First touch. Their hands and they're in nitro gloves. That's actually a good question. Oh uh, wait, like purify at first touch of the striga? That's what my assumption was. It would purify okay. anything that touched it for the first time. Well, I but guess, not yeah, that how, the first, else... not that it has a one shot kind of kill shot sort of thing. I just didn't want this to be a everything the guy touches turns to Skittles situation. All right, like this. You guys um, never seen that commercial? Uh, no, not familiar with that one. Okay. Anyway, drenched redder under the moon. What does that mean? We put the blood on the branch. Whose under blood? The moon. The blood of the demon. Oh, that's right. She gave us the blood. It has been a while. <laughs> It has been Actually, a few hours, and I have a very short attention span. <laughs> it's all right. You did get knocked unconscious just a few hours ago, too. So. I sure did. Um, and who Strange. is the dreg, and whose thirst are they quenching? The dregs is the blood that washes over the wood. Then so then they touch it, and then she drinks it, and the... We, we, Should we you know like what? be I hope carving right. the branch hope right. into like a funnel situation? I, I and then we, we just, can just like pop it in her mouth and like, like a beer bong the it? blood? 
That is vile. That's not I mean, a bad idea. I hadn't idea, thought actually, of it that way, but I was yeah, thinking like catch it in like a bowl or something. But I like your idea because then the bowl maybe just gets blessed after the blood runs off. No, it, so just like funnel it direct. straight in your mouth. Just pour it in, touch, but will, and go. Would carving it? Listen, I had the priest do it, and he didn't say anything about blessing it and then carving it. So I'm assuming we can carve it after. It's yeah, well, blessed. because it's you told them it was you didn't tell him it was for demon fighting. Well, no, but I assume he would have said, "Now you don't want to carve it after I bless it, because then that ruins the blessing." So I'm well, assuming it stays blessed even if we decide to like carve a hole in it. Well, realistically, and this is Meta Rob talking, you did tell him it was being used for carpentry, so I assume that's correct. Yeah, I did not lie about that. Meta Rob flies away. <laughs> so yeah, we Cuckoo, exactly. <laughs> we just stick the branch in her mouth, run the blood down it. She drinks it. Boom, we're done. I mean, I like it. Right. And there was no like ritual words or anything. So I guess we're good then, right? Yeah, we just need to get her. Which I guess we don't. We could do it over at the uh, warehouse, right? I mean, it's there's windows. Be under moonlight. That would take her out back. Yeah. That sounds. Just take the cage skitty. out. Draw. The, we can just drag the cage outside and do it there. All right. I'm in. Drag, drag the cage out to moonlight. Pop a blessed wooden funnel in her mouth. Pour the demon blood. It, wow. Yeah, that's a sentence. Okay, that's what we're doing. All right. So what do we do for the next eight hours or so? Dwarma comes up on your phones. I could eat. Yeah, I could eat. Yeah, we should probably go check on the witch, though. Just get it to go. We'll go over there and just hang out at the warehouse. Yeah. Right. Play some uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, it's kind of out there. I don't know how much you're going to find, but... Uh, Wait, yeah, you yeah. play Pokemon Go? As of five seconds ago, yes. Well, hold on. <laughs> I got to add you. What's your... What's your oh, yeah, code? yeah. So I'll, I'll just... I'll text it to you real quick. All right. All right. It's yeah. uh, Slip69. Hey! Rex does not join the Pokemon thing whatsoever. <laughs> I was going to ask. In no way, shape, or form. <laughs> That's how the government they tracks track your you. location. <laughs> they know everywhere you go because they go. There so smash the cut. We've swarma leftovers all over the ground <laughs> of the warehouse. Yeah, you're all sitting around. Um, I'm gonna say there's like, since you're in sort of like the industrial area of the town, there's probably like near the road like this one sort of warehouse place that like they made a pokey stop but like it was a bad decision or not a pokey stop <laughs> a, a gym um that like no one goes to because it's so far out here um so you guys spend a few minutes sort of putting your putting your pokemon in the gym and i don't know it's been a lot of time to play pokemon go is sort of the extent of my knowledge of it now you all you all own a pokemon gym congratulations <laughs> look at us um, but yeah, we uh, smash cut, star wipe uh, to after dinner. You're all sort of sitting around waiting for the moon to rise um, outside. Is there anything you would like, anything else you would like to do to prepare for the ritual? We still have all our silvery stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Do I have I... Abby's shotgun. Yes. Cool. Is this going to take a magic roll, or is this just we do it? Um... Uh, I am going to, since you did so much preparation, um, I was going to have that be sort of part of a big magic. You've done so much preparation and sort of research that I'm going to say it's going to take a use magic roll um, from one of you, um, and then anybody who wants to help can help. Okay. Um, I, since I have the mystical library um, for mm -hmm. my part of our haven, um, I can use the occult tomes and grimoires uh, basically to get myself plus one forward to use magic. Um, so if I either needed to go back to Davian's place quickly and like grab any books, or if that exorcism book that he gave me made 
provide me for some knowledge or anything. Um, I think when we yeah, do I a think, little bit I of think that's um, the book that us. he gave you is sort of in the same vein. So I think you could probably pull some stuff from that. Um, in addition to I think information about like exorcisms and stuff, there is some about like general knowledge for like breaking curses and things like that. So um, yeah, I think you can use that. Then I will do that to prepare. All right, so uh, Wynn's sort of flipping through the book, kind of pulling out any extra information that he can. Um, the rest of you, I assume, moving the uh, the cage with Destiny in it outside. Do you just move the whole thing with her in it? Um, okay. We've got She-Hulk, so I think we can... <laughs> um, so there's this terrible scraping noise as Sally sort of pushes the uh, Legend of Zelda style, just like very slowly <laughs> pushing the box across uh, to, uh, I'm going to say the, um, you sort of uh, roll up one of the big uh, rolling doors that would have been sort of formally used as a loading dock and kind of push it out onto uh, the edge of this dock. Um, as the uh, clouds part above you and uh on... oh, have we whittled a funnel is that is that actually happening okay, i'm sweet. assuming so sweet i'm not gonna make you roll to i really like that idea so carve. add some good flavor to this it's pretty fun um so yeah you uh take to the next the last couple hours have been spent sort of eating shawarma pulling stuff out of a book sort of whittling the wood down um with you know no instruction from the priest that you can't do this thing uh that logic checks out so we're gonna let that one exist like it is and uh you uh, sort of push the clouds um part a little bit and kind of dissipate these kind of thin um fall clouds and the um moonlight from uh the waxing moon sort of shines down upon you and the branch and the cage and destiny within um who at this moment as you've been sort of i think over over the course of the last day or so sort of just feeding her steaks um is uh is currently in in the form of destiny um kind of sitting in the uh in the bottom of the cage kind of cross-legged on the floor um looking tired <laughs> and a little defeated um and like she's not feeling so great, um, but she sort of sits there as the as the moon kind of breaks through the crowds and looks at all of you and says, "So what now?" Yeah. So we figured out they figured out a way to hopefully fix this. I assume that's why I'm outside. Yeah, like moonlight. Yeah. Yeah, why is that always a thing, by the way? I don't know. I feel like there's like there's got to be like a handbook for how to make weird magic spells. There are lots of them, actually. I actually have a couple. There you go. <clears throat> I can show there you, you some go. later, but yeah. Rex sends a little thing, an article about like moon phases and uh, 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 cycles within. Um, hormones uh, amongst women and women in magic and he just starts sending articles about why moonlight is connected to magic or at least in conspiracy circles why um huh we have to look into that anyway so we're gonna pop this thing in your mouth and you're gonna drink this and hopefully that's good yeah we're hoping it's the last time you ever have to drink blood i was gonna we ask mention what it was no it's yeah, it's blood. Yeah. I mean, it's purified. Probably. It will will be purified. There are lots of spells that require you to drink some like pretty nasty stuff. So, it, it, honestly, this is fine. There you go. Yeah. See, optimism. That is a good way to approach this whatever we're doing. I have no well, it's either this time. or die, so It's true. See? Yeah. Optimistic, right there. Again, very optimistic. All right, let's go ahead and do this before the clouds come back again. So, uh, yep, let's kick this thing in the ass. Let's go. Uh, I, I, I guess I need to do the. Is there something I'm going to be reading as far as the magic goes, or like somebody else needs to hold it and do the process, and then? I'll... Well, did she give you magic words? 
I did a little bit of research on my own about it. So, um, there's... Um, Rex, Rex, he points at, at Wynn like, duh, it's magic. <laughs> and then Travis shoots another <laughs> glance at Sally like, see, another thing that she left out. We're building our demon case. <laughs> it's going to be great. We're taking it to demon court. What are you talking about? Really, what you wouldn't, don't worry about it. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't client, pa patient, client confidentiality. Doctor, you're not a doctor. Are... I am. Doctor Sally. Mm -hmm. Attorney at Demon Law. All right, let's just oh, do this, you? and then I really am tired. The doctor of Law. Yeah, that's what I said. All right, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Stop futzing around. All right. So... We're just being gaslighted so hard right now <laughs> by this group. Yep. <laughs> yep. I may get my one true mission in this game to gaslight win every chance I can. God. All right. So, uh, Sally, I assume, holding up the uh, carved branch and sort of letting it um, angle uh, down. Before I touch it. Okay. What? Hey, hey, Rexy. Yeah, yeah, any of those big handful of nitro gloves. <laughs> She's gonna put like like five on each hand okay. and then hold it up. Okay. Um yeah, so you put uh, several pairs of gloves on each hand to uh protect your skin. Um Sally, you sort of pick up the branch and uh preparing for the ritual, angle it down. Um so one end of it is sort of sticking into the cage near destiny um and nothing's hurting you but i think just on the like on the sensitive parts of your palms um through the gloves it's just a little warm mm -hmm. okay just a little um okay. not uncomfortably sign, so but um so you uh hold up the branch <laughs> um when you have your uh <laughs> Look, <laughs> and um, you prepare to sort of complete this ritual. Um, who's got the blood? Somebody's got to pour the blood. I, I thought Win was doing the thing with the blood, but he's doing the ritual, so Trav, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it. I'm not gonna get like demon aids, am I? I'm in uncharted territory here. It's a serious We're going to unpack that on many labels later. Just do it. Okay. All right, so... He very carefully uh, handles the blood. Maybe. So, uh, Travis, you sort of have the bag of blood, which you can, I guess, like, cut the corner off like a frosting bag and just <laughs> um, kind of dump it into the, uh, the blood bong um, as when uh, you... Uh, Say I, some, I say some the words sort of, that whatever needs to be done to cast this magic. I, I think it is some sort of like cobbled together incantation that's kind of pulled from um, a couple of different sources in this book, it, from, like breaking it, curses and everything. In the ancient Latin, chug, chug, chug. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as Wynn starts the incantation, uh, Travis, you start to pour the blood sort of down um, this groove that you have carved out in the blessed branch um, as destiny prepares herself um, I am gonna have you win roll to use magic okay uh, which for which you have a plus one forward because of your mystical library learning. yeah because I took the time to read something good job so I'm glad I had that so that's a 10 that is a 10 so that's a full success um so yes uh you say this incantation and uh travis you pour um angula's blood sort of into the groove and uh down toward destiny um who drinks it um and That's fun. Uh, as this happens, um, 
the uh, as Wynn is sort of saying these magic words, I think Rex, as you're watching all of this happen, you can see um, as the blood sort of hits the wood for the first time, there is um, a kind of bubbling on the surface of it, almost almost uh, like like liquid hitting a hot surface. Um, and it uh, sort of snakes down the wood and you can almost hear like this sizzling sound coming off of it. Um, and as it reaches destiny, um, it, it takes on almost a little bit of a glow as it funnels off of the wood and into her mouth. Um, she, she drinks the blood um, and uh, as the first part of the ritual is sort of completed when you finish the spell, um, Destiny, kind of a little bit of blood uh, trickling down her face, looks around at all of you. Um, and nothing happens for a second. And you wait in silence and she eventually kind of looks around at all of you and says, I don't feel any different? Eat some shawarma. If it grab tastes, the leftovers back. <laughs> yeah, if it tastes okay, then maybe it worked. Um, and uh, as somebody goes to grab the leftovers and sort of sticks them through to her, um, and she reaches up her hand to grab them, and as she does, uh, there is this horrible cracking sound, um, which you've all heard something similar before, um, because you were all there when Wynn broke Sally's arm. Um, so you hear this kind of horrible, like, cracking sound of a bone breaking, and Destiny lets out this horrible scream of pain, and you can all see, once again, like, her body contorting and changing as her limbs, limbs kind of extend, and her back hunches, um, and she screams, and as her snout extends, it turns into this growl, um, and just for a moment, she's back in this form, the Striga form, um, and as she is sort of looking around, um, and you can still see even in this form kind of tears running down her face just as she is in so much pain. Um, and then as quick as it happens, it starts to revert and she changes back um, very quickly, quickly than the last time you saw her and her uh, extended limbs and her claws kind of retract and she turns back into herself um, and sits on the uh, the floor of the cage and sort of lays down um, on the concrete, laying on her back, uh, just kind of softly sopping. Rex sticks the shawarma back in, sets it down. You 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 st you still want some shawarma? I don't think she says anything. Let's uh, <laughs> I think we can open up the cage. Yeah, Travis nods and goes to unlock the cage. Lock the cage, um, and she is uh, sort of laying there, and after a minute, she sits up um, and kind of wipes her face um, and kind of looks around at all of you and says, was that supposed to happen? Well, it depends. Do you feel any different? Yeah, I feel like I got hit by a truck. Okay, progress, I think. Quite a streakless truck. Right, do you feel like, I don't know, blood sounds appetizing? And she kind of like wipes the, <laughs> the blood off of her face and looks at it. No. All right. That's, that's good, that's okay. good. Progress, try the shawarma. And Rex holds out hand sanitizer through the bars real quick. <laughs> she takes some uh, and kind of wipes it on her hands and then wipes the like last dregs of, of blood and everything off her hands and takes some uh, leftover shawarma uh, and takes a bite and chews it and chews it and swallows it and says, Oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Yes! Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Well, 
We probably need to still keep an eye on you just for a little while. Make sure that it's not I mean, going to sure, come back. Surely we can let her out of the cage, though. Yeah, yeah. No, out of the cage, I think. But yeah. let's take you back to your apartment. And then someone should probably stay there. I do that. Yeah, I mean, I think in the course of all this, I probably lost a roommate, so. Like yeah. by eating them or? No, I just, <laughs> wait, wait, you we know. Made her, we made her leave. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Monster, like, people don't really want to live with you anymore, which, fair. Do you want your dog back? Yeah. I go get your dog. Yeah. Dog's better than a roommate uh, anyway. You know, doesn't pay rent, but everything else is cool. One of the only ones that came to look for me, so. Man's best friend and all that. Good dog. Why did you do all this? Uh, the goodness of our hearts, right, guys? I've seen you all. I know you probably could have just killed me. Well, there was another option, so yeah, and I mean, there wasn't any reason to kill you. You weren't always a mindless monster, right? So, yeah. It was person intentionally evil. And Rex takes a, a heroic stance from, like, one of the Overwatch characters. Also, I mean, fucking Gula. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of her. Hey, me. I'm gonna lie. Yeah. Another reason we probably need to keep an eye on you, just in case. Hmm. Do you think she's gonna come back? Uh... <laughs> she's not supposed to, based on the yeah. terms of our agreement. Yeah. But maybe just in case, we'll stick around with you for a few days. All right. That sounds good. I gotta get all this stuff back to Davian's place, so. Um, like grabbing like the scythe and the books and <laughs> yeah we can help you like load up the car and, and stuff alright I, I wouldn't want to take the bus with all of this good point alright just sort of everything back to the car okay you load up the car and all of you pile in? Who's going? Who's going where? Rex has their motorcycle, so... Okay. Can try and go back to Destiny's apartment and get the dog? So are you going to stay with Destiny at her apartment, or yeah, bring sure. her over to your place? Okay. I'll stay at her place. Yeah, and then Wynn's just going just going home or okay. to Davian's home all right so everyone's going home Travis where are you going it's your car uh, that is a good point um I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out with Sal cool okay awesome uh at some point and the uh before they take off Rex will like hold up his phone and point at her and then point at the phone like and put their hand out like hand me your phone okay puts the phones like back to back and then turns it and starts tapping f furiously and on hit and uh, their own phone and then takes the two apart after a minute and hands it back to them and uh puts a thumbs up and then, and then, and then, and then Rexy looks at everyone else and does the like, I'm, I, I you know, I'm watching, <laughs> basically, for your protection. I mean, yep. I'm not really in a place to argue. 
You can just get a new phone when all this is said and done. I'm gonna have to get a new wife when all this is said and done. You'd be surprised how much people write things off. Let's go get your dog. And uh, you all take off. Um, so um, a couple of you uh, are staying with Destiny at uh, her empty apartment. So Sally and Travis, um, you are there. Rex, you go home, wherever that is this week. <laughs> um, Sounds good. And uh, when you go back to Davian's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you all uh, split up for the night. Um, and uh, uh, Travis and Sally, you make it back to Destiny's apartment um, where Scully uh, has been waiting ever so patiently uh, for her mom to to return um, and uh, is excited to see um, all of you. <laughs> because uh, she just sort of knows you now. So, very friendly dog. Um, and uh, you all hang out for the evening. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to do this evening circa the end of this mystery? Before something else dramatic happens, because I'm sure it will. Yeah. I don't think so. Working on wordplay. Finding loopholes. Okay. And I, I think uh, Rex will set up set up a deal where if anybody's phone in the crew goes dead, it it'll ping them. That way if anybody you know, if if they're if something happens to their phone, then they they obviously something is wrong as far as Rex is concerned. <laughs> and uh, that way it'll be like an alarm for the whole crew. And he sets it up uh, to go backwards too. So if if ever Rex's phone goes dead, it'll text them. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, I was trying to decide if this is like a weird science thing. I don't know. You can probably just do this. You call it. Hmm. Let's roll plus weird because I think you're um, adapting a device. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a six. Not much I can I'm do about it. <laughs> I am thinking if if anybody can help with this. We're all in different spots, right? Maybe text advice? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think Wynn has anything to help with technology. <sighs> Leon, on my own on this one. Trick works on a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, uh, you set this up. Um, you're still able to create your device with the key repeats for your picks requirements. So it's still for your purposes works. Um, you have this set up on everybody's phone. Um, I think it uh, is probably more difficult than you thought it would be. Um, so you probably spend most of the night working on this um, and we will see moving forward if it works as you intended. Um, but for, for your purposes right now, you do get it set up um, and it does work with big quotes around <laughs> around work um, okay. okay sweet so you uh you spend most of your night rex getting that working um travis and sal um sort of working through talking through the contract and trying to find loopholes um and when going to sleep yeah just uh getting some much needed needed sleep okay um so everybody sort of rests for the night um nothing eventful happens you all have the uh the most restful night's sleep you can get um but early the next morning um i say early 
Travis relative early. I will say like 7.30 in the morning. Uh, Travis, your phone rings. Ah, Brax. <laughs> um, Travis? Yes? Uh, it's, uh, it's Ajax. What's up? Sorry, I know it's early for you. Um, is Abby with you? That is not the question I wanted to be asked by you. Um, That's not the answer I wanted from your end. Yeah, I assume she's not with you then. She's not. No, she got a call and said there was an emergency and she had to dip some time yesterday. She was supposed to meet me this morning and didn't. Okay. Where was she supposed to meet you? Uh, the Haven. She's not here. Son of a bitch. All right. Uh, all right. I'm on my way. Okay. And he hangs up the phone. And that's where we're going to take our break. Fuck! early the next morning uh, as Travis deals with this phone call. So thank you uh, everybody out there for watching and hanging out with us. Um, we will be back in just a few short minutes after we take a quick refreshing break um, to see what happens. So we'll see you soon. And welcome back internet. I don't know what that was. Um, I enjoyed <laughs> it new, very much. That's my new um, host voice that I'm going to do from now on. Welcome back, internet, to this week's episode of Slaying 101. It's just becoming Davian. We're back, and we're going to keep playing this awesome uh, game that I love so much. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pick back up right where we left off. Um, Travis, it's about 7.30 in the morning, and you have just uh, hung up the phone with Ajax, um, who has told you that he has not seen Abby, and he was supposed to, and he is very concerned, because she's not with you. So, what what it do? What you do? Uh, where is Sally related to where I am? Uh, you guys are both at Destiny's apartment, um, so... She probably kept know. it on the floor, or if there was a couch yeah, there available. Was, there was a spare bedroom um, that still sort of had some, some furnishings in it, so where her roommate has uh, since moved out after all this nonsense, so there was a, a bedroom and then kind of like a main living area with a couch and everything. All right. so She'd probably want to take the away. couch so she could keep an eye on the door. All right, yeah, so I'll come out of the bedroom. Sal, get up. What? 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 I, I don't know where the kid is. She went home. No. Ajax just called me. And uh, she never came back to the Haven. You don't even see Sally move. She's just in your face and she has your collar. She's just like, what did he say? Uh, I will say, like, relay exactly word for word what Ajax said. Like... You know, they were supposed to meet. Is he there? He, uh, yeah, I think so. Let's go. All right. Uh, shit. The witch. Uh, fuck. She's fine. She, you just, you don't see her again. She's just going to run over to Destiny's room. Uh, and just like wake her up. Hey. Oh God. Hey. Hey. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Uh, uh. You got our numbers. We have an emergency. We gotta go. Anything weird? Just. Well, you know what? Rexy's listening to your phone anyway. So, uh, just what? uh, text a nine one one. Uh, let us know if you see anything weird. But we have to go. Okay. Uh, go back to sleep. 
Okay, bye. And do you need help? She says as you like go out the door. <laughs> Okay. She just kind of sits there. She'll run back. She'll give scritches to Scully and then run away again. And yeah, uh, I'm going to the Haven. All right, we're going. Let's just. Hey, you get in Travis's car and drive toward Abby's Haven. Um, do you do anything on the others? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you text the other two, um, Rex and Wynn, you receive a text. What do, you, uh, what do you tell them? Abby's missing. Meet at the Haven now. I've like hit my phone a couple of times. Like, God <laughs> damn it. Was it. As soon as uh, Wynn reads the message, though, I think he, he decides not to hit the snooze button. <laughs> Okay. Character development. Right. Yeah. Wow. There. Incredible. You're all welcome. <laughs> and as Rexy's moving, he's trying to locate her phone, Abby's phone. Okay. Um, yeah. You uh, get the text, sort of head toward the Haven on the way. Um, Rex, as far as you can tell, her phone is in the Haven. All right. It's coming from uh, inside the house. Oh, see, uh, so that's that's what Rex sends, like something like, you know, uh, squiggle cross signs, swearing in <laughs> in uh, uh, symbols, and then, you know, she doesn't have her phone. Her phone's in the haven. And then types fuck. Um, <laughs> Uh, receive this information um, Travis and Sally I think you make it to the Haven um, Rex and then when arriving soon after um, Ajax lets you in alright Rex can you creep on her do you know where she is a big hood not a shake this place has got cameras galore right can we can we look in and see the last time she was here yeah yeah that'd be good um, and Rex walks over to the computer and then, like, looks around at everyone and then looks I th at, like, I think Ajax. in this situation she Please, would allow you to touch Rex. the computer. Yes. It's okay. Then, it, then it's, like, just a blur, you know, <laughs> like, movie-style, you know, hacking, which always aggravates anyone who's ever been a real hacker. But, uh... Best but... scene in NCIS or is two people... Yes, on the, the double keyboard. keyboard. Every <laughs> time... <laughs> Oh. It looks like Rex has four hands. I love introducing people to that scene. It's so bad. It's the best scene in all of NCIS. And um, I love NCIS, but man, me too. dumb. And then, anyway. and then there's like a ta a tablet comes out uh, uh, and sets there, and then there's connecting cables from the tablet, and then there's things running on the tablet that are now running into her system to try to access cameras and code break and whatnot. Because okay, I don't know her stuff um yeah i think between you um and ajax who is there who knows her pretty well um and and travis who also knows her pretty well i think the three of you um can probably crack some of some of abby's passwords to two things um and so you um, spend a, a few minutes kind of cracking in to get to the camera feed um and I'm gonna have you roll for doing computer things, <laughs> which is not a roll in this game. Um, do you think this would fall under your weird science, or is there a something uh, that you would rather use? I think it would be uh, investigate using sharp. Okay, absolutely. Um, yeah, let's have you roll to investigate a mystery. Eleven. Very, very good. Um, so yes, uh, so what you have is you can ask either two general questions or one specific question. Um, there is the, the list of questions for reference or if there is something specific that you want to know, you can ask me as well. I'm gonna see what's on that list, I always forget. Okay, and those are just guidelines if you have your own sort of questions you can ask. Yeah, yeah. what happened here, what happened to Abby? 
Okay. Um, yeah, so that'll be what happened. Um, you sort of pull up the feed and you all see as Rex kind of pulls up the, um, is successful in kind of getting into the system, pulling up the video feed. Um, and you flip through to uh, around the time sort of shortly after Abby left you last night um, and said that she was returning home for an emergency. Um, and there are cameras, I think, in addition to in the Haven and right outside the Haven, also kind of around the exterior of the um, uh, her family's home themselves. They at least have like a ring doorbell or something, right? Um, <laughs> So uh, you kind of pull from from both of those as they're all kind of in the same network um, and look for her. So about 20, 30 minutes after she left you, um, you do see um, Abby on her Vespa um, pull up kind of outside the Haven, um, enter whatever code it is she has to enter um, and go in. Um, she looks around for a while, um, she goes over to uh, where her sort of lore library is, her um, all her bookshelves and everything, because she did say she was going to um, look in some of her books for a prayer for all of you. Um, she sort of pulls a couple of books off the shelves, looks through them, um, takes one out, sets it on the desk, um, and as she does this, um, you see her stop um, and then as if she's heard something, sort of go over to the console where you are right now um, and look um, at the screen for a moment um, and then move over toward the entrance to the Haven again. Um, and as she hits sort of a blind spot where uh, two cameras are sort of from the interior, um, there's sort of a blind spot in between like there and the door. Um, she hits that spot, and then you don't see her again. And you flip through for a little bit, um, and for several hours of the footage, no one re-enters the Haven. Um, it gets to be, uh, I think, let's see, overnight, uh, about 3 a.m. Um, there is some more movement as you're fast forwarding on the camera and you see a figure um, enter the haven that you are not familiar with. It's it's not Abby. It's definitely too tall to be Abby. Um, this sort of uh, hooded figure um, in essentially like black pants and a black hoodie with the hood pulled up and uh, kind of a bandana covering most of their face sort of coming into the haven um, and not not tearing the place up like a lot of things are not out of place when you entered um but definitely like looking through things kind of rummaging around going into the the rooms that are down here travis's room um also and kind of looking through a bunch of things and then quickly leaving again um and then at about 6 a.m um on the camera you see ajax coming yeah, it was screenshot, 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 obviously, of, of the person trying to put together enough shots to make a 3D model of the individual. Okay. Um, so we can get, like, height, comparative, and, and that sort of thing, bone structure, pro possible weight, all the kind of crazy things that Rex would think yeah. of. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think from those analysis is, an analysis is, is, is um, analyses, you can get a couple things. You can't see this person's face. Um, you can see their eyes in a couple of shots. Um, a couple of shots is a sort of a taller um, man, probably, um, if you had to guess, um, you know, a little bit um, thick through, through the shoulders um, and arms. Uh, they um, are have uh, lighter skin, um, and I think there is this moment um, in a couple of screenshots that you get where they have turned towards one of the cameras. Um, you can see their eyes, which are dark in most of them, and then there is just this one moment, and I think you're not sure if it is like a camera flare or if it is something else, but there is this one moment um, where there is this kind of like light um green like sheen across their eyes. Rexy points and then 
collapses back in the chair and just is like distraught and just stays there. <laughs> I might be able to see where she's at right now. Hmm. Like she gave you. Up. She gave you. I still have the token she gave me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna start preparing a rope from my spell book. Um, I'm gonna cast my spirit walk and see if I can zero in on her location. Yeah. And Rexy's gonna start doing a concentric ring outside the, the, the mansion itself to CTV okay. cameras, to ATM cameras, to 7-Eleven cameras. And, and do a camera search in a, like I said, in a concentric ring outward to try to find, you know, a van, a struggling abbey, uh, you know, this individual, anything that, that could have happened. Okay. Excellent. Um, so, Spirit Walk. Sorry, I'm going into your sheet to read it. That's fine. Do, 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 do. No, it's mine. It's private. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> have no power here. I'm um, sorry, you haven't done this one in a while. No, it's been okay, a while. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think it's this is a first story. So we'll do that first. Okay. Um, yeah, so roll your... Do you have to roll? I don't remember how roll Yes, I do. Work. So I still use uh, use magic. Um, it's just okay. my rotes are a just the, okay, right. specified, the, more powerful version of that. Right. Stipulations are different. Great. So yeah, roll plus weird. One day I'll learn how this game works. Not today, though. Uh, that is a nine. So it's a mixed success. Okay, so you draw some attention yeah. as you as you do this. Yeah. Okay. From of other ethereal beings. Interesting. Okay. Um, so you want to uh, essentially project yourself. Using the token she gave me uh, to okay. her location. Do you get anything for... Uh, you get any bonus for that? Oh wait, I get plus one on going to use magic magic against them. Um, so I do get Make that nine a good good ten. That makes it a ten. Yeah, I forgot about okay. that. Okay, yeah. Uh, so your body goes catatonic, and for the length of the spell, you travel great distances in your ethereal form and observe events as they happen. So I'm assuming you want to use this token to try to send yourself to wherever wherever she's at. Yeah, Abby is okay. Um, Great. So you spooky ethereal music. I'm sure there's something in here. Uh, as um, Rex, as you uh, sort of sit back in the chair, um, the other ones of you sort of watching watching this unfold, this footage unfold before you. Um, Wind sort of takes out um, the uh, the token, which I think is a lock of Abby's hair yeah. that you have. Um, and you sort of set up this... That she um, gave to me, I just in case anybody missed yeah, that. Yeah, no, like, she I just gave didn't it steal to that. you. Okay, just want to make For sure. sure. Yeah, so she, it's really creepy otherwise. She willingly and with total consent just gave you a lock of her hair for magic purposes um, because she knows a lot about magic and figured it would be useful. Good thing she did, huh? Um, so you uh, sort of set up the rituals or take out the, um, the lock of Abby's hair that you have um, sitting down somewhere probably because you are about to go totally catatonic. Um, so you uh, sort of sit down and um, all of you see as Wynn um, sort of closes his eyes tight and focuses on this rote. Um, and then uh, he, I'm, I'm imagining you're like sitting on like the one of the couches that's, yeah. that's down there. Um, so he... Um, uh, as this uh, spark of magic sort of coalesces in front of him, sort of sits back and leans his head back and his eyes open and sort of roll back and go completely white um, as Wynn is in this like catatonic state on the couch, just sort of holding onto um, Abby's token. And when you feel your consciousness just being like catapulted forward um, and sort of flying 
out of you and out of the um, the haven and sort of up into um, the uh, the early morning uh, dawn sky. Um, and there is this moment, I think, where um, the spell really starts to take effect, and you're sort of getting your getting your bearings, and then you find yourself just being like forced. Um, through kind of through the sky and over the treetops of Cedar Grove, um, back toward uh, the uh, sort of small industrial district of the city, um, over a familiar building, a warehouse you were just at the night before, um, and a couple of blocks over into um, another sort of abandoned building, um, and you uh, your consciousness kind of phases through the walls and into um, this empty warehouse with kind of discarded machinery and boxes and kind of bits just like laying around kind of rusting from disuse and like planks of wood and into um, what looks like an it used to be an office of some kind kind of in this warehouse um, and you see Abby um and at first glance I think she looks to be sleeping um or unconscious um she is sitting in um like an old uh kind of t- uh, slightly torn um rolling office chair um ropes kind of tying her to the um the back of it and she uh for your purposes is alive um is either passed out or sleeping or unconscious um, her head kind of lolling to one side her glasses kind of sliding down her nose um she doesn't look to be injured um but it's not currently awake um and in the room as you're observing you can kind of see off to one side um sitting in a chair a uh, a man that you don't recognize um, sitting there uh, sort of elbows on his knees, sort of hands up under his chin um, with a, a look on his face as if he is contemplating sort of all of all of his life's problems um, uh, looking very very sort of disconcerted and uh, every once in a while he will speak out loud um, to the dog that is sitting on the floor next to him um at his feet sort of sitting there looking up at him there is this large uh black mastiff um that uh is just sort of sitting um for the most part and then he will speak to it and it will sort of look up toward him um in response uh i i try to get closer to him and see if like there's anything on the desk or anything else that like he has in front of him um that he might be looking at books a phone anything okay yeah um he in front of him sort of uh it's laid out kind of on um i don't think he's necessarily looking at them but kind of laid out on on one side on this old um kind of rusty desk are um his his phone and um like a a wallet like a pocket knife that he's like thrown onto the table um there's also kind of a small um like leather uh bag or like pouch that has like a zipper on uh on one side that he he sort of laid out there as if he's like emptied his pockets onto the desk um and then next to that there are some papers laid out um on which there are a couple of things you recognize just at a quick glance um because some of it uh, definitely looks like magic. Um, And there is, I think, a piece that sticks out to you that has sort of some notes like scribbled in the margins and everything that looks to be um, at least the basic outline of some kind of summoning ritual. Okay. Can I tell like what he's summoning? Or is it so basic that it could be any number of things? Um, I'm gonna have you roll uh, plus sharp for investigating. Okay. Oh wait, my last roll was to use magic, so I have a mm-hmm. seven. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. So it's uh, one general question with reasonable detail, I assume. What was he... What yeah. kind of creature was he summoning? I'm trying to summon. Um, let's see. With reasonable detail. Um, I think at, at first glance, I think you can, because this has been sort of a, um, a, a presence in your life recently, it, it doesn't look to be anything sort of like demonic or um, devilish or anything like that. The, the language and the runes surrounding it are a little bit different. Um, I think, I don't know that you can tell exactly what kind of creature that, or what specific type of creature it is, um, but with the, the, the runes and sigils and everything that are around it and kind of the wording of the spell, it's probably something, it's definitely something from another plane um, than your own. Uh, probably not hellish, um, but uh, it's either something um, sort of elemental or ethereal or some something like that. Um, not something that I think you would consider like inherently bad or evil. Okay. And it's it's on a piece of paper. It's not like he has drawn this out on the floor or on the desk or something. Like he has done the ritual. This is like the no, blueprints yeah, it, of it, how it would be done. It looks like some notes. Okay. Like some notes that he has. And I will say, I think from, because you rolled so, so good um, for your spell. I think you can tell that it like, um, there's two different handwritings on the paper. So mm -hmm. it looks like he has these notes um, in from one person and then maybe has like scribbled some notes in in the margins of them okay all right uh then i kind of reassess the room one more time make sure there's no other weapons or anything else that i'm seeing here like he doesn't have like a gun or something like that that we need to be aware of um and if i don't see anything else new uh then i would kind of look over at Abby and I know she can't hear me but she's asleep and so she might be more in tune with the astral plane right now and might be able to hear me and I just say we're gonna be here soon just hold on and uh, I let go of the spell and snap back to my body okay um, yeah you say this and you um, as you say these words out loud right before you are able to fully let go of the spell um, as you speak to Abby, um, I think you just briefly out of the your peripheral vision, you see a little bit of movement as the mastiff um, that is sort of sitting next to this man's feet, its head sort of snaps over and looks directly at you. And just for a second, its eyes go um, from this dark, uh, like black to this uh, shining green and it looks at you and then you let go of the spell and kind of snap back into your body and um, everybody in the haven you see when kind of take a breath um, as uh, his eyes go back to normal um, and uh, he sits up now the, remind me this spell could we hear him speak no okay well, do you think when you like were speaking to Abby, you were speaking out loud? I said no, and then immediately regretted it. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on your definition. The way I wrote it is, yeah, I just don't remember how it worked last time. Um, so you you didn't see anything that he saw. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I remember that much. Yeah, I go catatonic. Um, uh huh. So. My thought process is everything I'm doing is just with my like astral form. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I don't think I say anything with my body. Fair enough. Um, but we can see when he comes in and out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you when he when he comes back, yeah. you you can see him. Yeah. Uh, come back. Sure. Um. But so yeah, pops out of it. His warehouse. Uh, a couple blocks over from where we were at before. Rex is immediately. Seriously. Go Google mapping. Yeah, there's a there's a guy there, um, had some papers in front of him, uh, and in a ritual, um, 
some some sort of elemental thing. I don't really know what it is. And then he had a dog, uh, and it, it looked at me. It saw me right before I came back, and it had like a green eyes or something like this this weird coloring to to it. I don't know what it could be. Some sort of like shapeshifter like or like the guy on the 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 the, the, the camera wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that could be I, the, that might have been the dog. Like I said maybe some sort of shapeshifter kind of uh, skinwalker sort of thing. Look at Ajax. Do you know of anything else that's like eye color changing things? Uh, the most things to to be honest. Um, Green? It's hard to say. I mean, green tied with elementals could be... I mean, it could be a couple of things. I'll... Skinwalker seems like a weird choice if you're pulling something sort of elemental or ethereal. I'll... I'll... I'll look into it. All right. Well, we just need to get over there, right? Travis is already grabbing his guns. I'm sure we've got something that'll slow it down. I I mean, Abby's fine. She's just, she's, she's out of it. If she's in that guy's clutches, she's not fine. Yeah. I just, yeah, we need to go. I agree. All right. Grab her shotgun. Grab big sword. Make this happen. Grabs the tablet so that he's still connected to Abby's system currently. And, and you guys see on the screens, there's just hundreds of, of little windows open that are all different cameras in in the vicinity, including people's phones and, and whatnot. Did the did the guy that you saw in the warehouse, do you look at be about the same build as the, the guy on the uh, the feed? Uh did does he look like the guy that was on the feed? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Well, the hoodie, blah, 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 the clothes. So. Yeah. Um, hey, Rex, you got a beat on a phone in that area? Anything? Yeah, he did have a phone with him uh, sitting on the desk, so. All right, Rex will try it. And if I remember, like, what kind of model it was, if it was, like, an iPhone or an Android, like, I'll... Sure it was. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Rex, you uh, tried to... Um, connect to a phone in that area. There's one um, uh, iPhone that you um, can sort of start to make your way into. Um, it is, it's pretty protected. Um, I'm gonna but, do the, uh, the like sleaze kind of thing, like sneak in passively. So like, I'm not invasive, but I'm I'm listening more than, more than uh, anything else. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna have you roll. Da, 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 da. Wish there were more ways for this. Um, maybe I'm gonna say it is a manipulate. Um, let me look at. Uh, let's do that, but with sharp. So roll plus sharp. Right. Oh, fudge me. Oof. Barely. Make success. Make success. Yep. Yeah. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So seven. Um. So you you manage. It takes you a little bit. You manage to um kind of make your way into um the phone itself just to be able to listen to anything that's going on. Um. I'll say because it's a mixed success. Um. You can only do this for a short amount of time. Um. So you're kind of having to dip in and out um so you're probably not getting everything um but getting kind of the important stuff uh, that is coming through so rex you sort of make your way into the phone um everybody is sort of piling in and heading over toward this warehouse um anything um, else you're doing to rex is gonna ride with someone because they're on the tablet you know just tapping furiously and okay. such i will allow rex to have the front seat. Ooh. It's that important, y'all. Wow. This is big. All right. Rexy's Converse are up on the dash and they can go for long. Okay. Travis, every now and again, looks at the Converse. 
Rexy wouldn't Brand notice, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you all sort of make your way in uh, in Travis's car over toward this warehouse. Um, and uh, on the drive, Rex, I think you're getting uh, kind of dipping in and out, getting bits and pieces. Uh, mostly what you're getting is um, this person. I think for the most part, it sounds like they are talking to themselves. Like every now and then they will uh, sort of ask a question out loud. Um, they don't get an answer um, with when, with your knowledge, it did seem like they were sort of like talking to their dog. I, I mean, which we've all done, um, if we're being honest. So, uh, but sort of like uh, every now and then asking a question out loud um, or saying something like, no, this is not what I planned or um, kind of almost as if they're like arguing with this dog a little bit. Um, I guess my question to you, Rex, is are you are you playing all this out loud um, or are you just listening to it um, like on, uh, on headphones or just for I, yourself? I, this is a newer vehicle, so I have audio jacked from the tablet okay. into, into the car Bluetooth, so it's, it's, it's playing over the speakers. Okay, um, yeah, so it's, uh, I think, you, you're getting close to the warehouse, um, and I think this last time um, there is a, a little bit of audio, and you all in the car sort of hear this voice um, saying, um, now, you've done a bit of trickery here. This is not what I asked for, and you know that. You've taken this way too far. Uh, and Travis, you recognize this voice. It's Stan. Travis, I think, kind of slams his fist on the dash. Rexy puts his feet down. <laughs> what? Bastard stand. I'm gonna fucking kill him. Is this one of your is this the guy I burned? <laughs> and Rex Rexy uses the voice box. Stan who Sutton. Stan Sutton, the fucking prick. Starts looking him up. <laughs> I, I immediately describe what he looks like, just and you know what? While you're at it, anything you could do to like maybe clean out his bank account or just like ruin his credit score would be fucking dope because I am so done with this prick. <laughs> and you're hearing, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh, just get creative with it, man. To, to the uh, uh, when Rexy had their feet up, you could see like the the sweatpants that they were wearing. That in between the converse of the sweatpants, there were uh, bright orange and white socks with BB-8 from Star Wars on him on the socks just some detail um, I, I have the same <laughs> socks I think nice. I got them in the Love loop it. right nice <laughs> hey loot crate if you're looking for people to sponsor eh? it's eh? us we love you <laughs> um, yeah so hey look at that uh, uh, Rex with their um the BB-8 socks and Converse sort of <laughs> propped up on the dash. I mean, start pulling up stuff on Stan Sutton. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. There is um, a particularly interesting uh, criminal record, part of which has been uh, conveniently wiped away because Stan started uh, working as an informant. Uh, for the police, so some of uh, some of the things that he did in the past were just sort of deleted um, and uh, maybe gone away. Um, he recently has been in contact with a um, detective Mitchell. Okay. Um, there is some sort of connection in his uh, past criminal history, um, particularly the person that he has been informing on, um, who you know very well. His name is Travis Kelly, and he's sitting in the car next to you. Holds the tablet up with the, <laughs> the picture of Trav. Yeah, not There's my best mugshot. There's at least one mugshot in there. 
I'm my best mugshot. I got a. Your hair was longer. It's nice. Yeah, I was going through some shit. Hmm. So we can just like wipe the floor with this guy. Yeah. Like, oh, man. yeah. No, honestly, if the guy walks out of there breathing, it'd be too kind. I'm fucking done, man. <sighs> Go to town, cool. Sal. Don't have to tell me twice. There's a dog, though. Yeah, well, my guess is he tried to, you know, bastard always liked copying me. I was the cooler one and still am. Probably got wind of the whole magic situation, made a deal with some fucking higher power thinking he was being clever and uh, bit off more than he could chew because he's a fucking dumbass. Sounds about right. I'm so... sorry. I feel like I'm saying the fuck word a lot. I don't. I he the really fuck grinds, word? grinds my gear. Yeah. Uh, sorry. The F word. Whatever. Just hadn't heard it that way before. No, it's, it's fine. Uh, the, so d d kill the, the asshole and keep the dog for questioning? Yeah, sure. Why not? Done. Uh, are we sure we... I mean, the priority is the kid. Well, yeah, that's that's assumed. So he he's just like a human, though, right? We're, we're... He he's he's your regular everyday average Joe. He's a slick fucking. The guy knows how to drive a car real well, does what he's told real well. He's he's a putz. And we're just gonna kill him. Well, you said he was an ass. I you gotta give me one, okay? I get right. one occasionally. Listen. I don't like, I've never offed somebody. I'm not going to ask anybody in this car to. All I'm saying is if it happens by accident, I don't particularly care. And, and Rex like taps the tablet and then plays a small clip from the uh, movie, Your Highness. And, and he's like, it's basically it, the wizard says, "Crack, crack, magic, motherfucker," and <laughs> and, and he's like, he shrugs like, "The guy's magic." <laughs> I mean, he's not magic. I mean, either way, fine. We'll bag them both. Fine. If we can, I knock if, him out. If we cannot kill him, let's just try not to. I just would really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I know, kid. I know. All right. Sorry, I just guy really fucking grinds my gears, and then he messes with the kid. I just <sighs> statistics on like drone strikes and and domestic violence and murder in, in just the United States is like popping up on your phones. Like, what's death? <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I... We're going to have a talk about that and kind of this group's uh, priorities here in a little while. I think we have more important things to talk to do right now. Fine. Bag and tags. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Fine. Then one last one. Police shootings. Stats show up. And then Rexy slumps in their seat. <laughs> Yes, well, Rex, you got a you got an axe to grind, all right? I I get it. Okay. So, you pull up to the warehouse uh, where you know Abby to be. Uh, what's what's the plan now that you're here? Where was the room? Do I get a sense Relative of like... Relative where we are, yeah. Yeah, I think you can tell. Um, I think they're um, where you are right now, sort of pulling up in this big um, lot. There are the loading docks and sort of the um, the main warehouse. Um, and then towards the back, there are a couple of uh, offices, what used to be offices. Um just sort of where, from where you are, you have to go uh, sort of into the building and then towards the, the back of it. Uh, I mean, listen, I think the, 
the dog or whatever it is saw me so they probably know we're coming so maybe we just go inside announce our presence do this standoff see if we can resolve this yeah maybe come in from the roof I mean that that works too if you want to I don't think all we right. could all go in through the roof but if you want to go in that way kind of Travis and I can him. take the roof we'll get the yeah. drop on him Travis yeah. grabs the kid I take care of the rest yeah Rex now go in the front I'll, I'll I'll talk and see if I can draw him out and Rex is gonna set up or try to set up to uh to make the guy's phone just you know go off at a okay. certain moment if we need a distraction like okay. the camera light and you know it'll go off like a flashbang all right all right all right slip stop on yep watch the sword just yep yeah, let me just okay now now we're good yep uh yeah, on. y'all want to can you give me some privacy can you just just turn around do you want me to like close no you're my fine eyes? just the, the, the other two of you just turn around just all, all the way all the way. you're gonna thank take you. your thank you. clothes off like what's she's, going on she's gonna fly up to the roof yeah i know okay uh so rex and win you turn your back um, and travis you hold on tight as uh sally holy shit literally <laughs> flies up to the roof and uh lands uh pretty gently for sally Wow. Can you, can you teach me how to do that? Probably not. But you can go for a ride anytime. <laughs> All right. Pig back. You know, it's a thing. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what were you thinking? Oh, I. What were you thinking? Nothing. Okay, then. I was taking cues from you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your friends right, both both say quiet, please. Like like from a movie, uh, you know, in the movie lobby or uh, presentation. Thing. Yeah, Sal. Geez, quiet. Come on, stealth mission. Let's go get the kid. Mm-hmm. And Rex looks at Win and gives him a little a little bump in the the shoulder. Yeah. You know, last twenty one years old, about to negotiate a hostage situation. This isn't how I saw my second junior year going, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can do it clip comes across your phone and then another bump in the shoulder and then the mega taser comes out <laughs> love, it. love it love it continue to love it and just with a uh with a big old sigh heads in through the the warehouse door okay um so uh Travis and Sally up on the roof. Wind heading in through the front. Rex also going or I I guess I'll maybe I'll go in and then sidestep into the shadows. Oh, and, sneaky. Okay. And the and their phone has like a big red button on it for the for the uh <laughs> for for the to make the flashbang phone. The alarm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, when I think you see Rex just for a minute, sort of follow in behind you and then kind of sidestep and uh, you don't know where they went. Um, you uh, make your way into the warehouse and Sally and Travis, you are on the roof. Um, yeah, hit me with that strike plan. What's what's happening? A couple right. things are happening at once, so. We got a general idea of where like the room was at. So mm -hmm. uh, thinking is if we hear the flashbang go off, then just rush that room. Yeah. yeah. Just drop in. Okay. Drop in. Okay. So you guys getting sort of ready uh, for Rex's signal win? Uh, you walk into the warehouse. Yep. Uh, Nakao. Look around. Is this kind of like I'm, I'm imagining a situation like warehouse floor, big open space because like maybe mm -hmm. some old machinery, and then like the manager's office is where they're at, like on a second floor, kind of up there, sort of thing. Or is this like all on one level? Like, can I see where this office is? 
Yeah, I think um, I, I think it is all on one level, um, but I think there um, where you are is this kind of big open floor with just some kind of like okay. distorted crates and machinery and stuff. And in the back, um, there are like a couple of doors with, you know, like big windows next to them, like where offices probably would have been. All right. Um, so again, like the very tall ceilings of, of a warehouse, but it kind of exists all on this one level. All right. I just walk in and say... Somebody order Uber Eats. Hello? Uh, I've got Jimmy John's here. You know they're going to come out for Jimmy John's. Uh, um, yeah, I think uh, you say this and uh, there is a just a second of silence and then a little bit of a motion at the back kind of a creaking of a uh, a door opening um, and you see one of the office doors um kind of open and then a uh, sort of large larger man kind of step out and then shut the door very quickly behind him hi morning uh i think you have the wrong place yeah, probably not. Um, I think you've got a friend of mine. You know, about yay high. Braids. Kind of nerdy looking. Listen, we just want her back. Uh, if you let her go. This doesn't have to get all, you know, violent. And have your role to manipulate. Okay. Uh, charm. That's a 14. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus. I rolled double sixes. You charming son of a gun. <laughs> that smile. It was the Jimmy Johns. <laughs> it was the Jimmy Johns. <laughs> Always grabs them. Always grabs them. Um, uh, I think uh, Stan, so we can call him by his name, at this point sort of looks at you, um, sort of one hand behind him on the door handle. Listen, I, I know you didn't want this to go this way. And you must be kind of freaking out too, working with uh, spells and stuff. I'm I'm sure you don't really know much about. But listen, uh, Stan, right? I, I, we just don't want this to go bad. So let her go, and we'll figure this out. Where's Travis? He's around. He doesn't seem to lack you very much. Um, Feelings I mutual. Yeah, I kind of get that. And I don't really know what's going on between the two of you. And, you know, I think the two of you should address your problems with each other directly, though, instead of getting, you know, innocent people involved. Oh, that's fun. You should tell him that. I have no idea what you mean. Like I said, not really here to get involved in any of that. Listen, kid. Hey, I'm an adult. You're what? 21 at most? That's a pretty good guess, actually. You're pretty good at that. Leave. Now. No, I, I really can't do that. Because if I, if I leave, if I go to walk out that door, things are going to get really bad in here. I'm kind of the only person on your side right now. All right. You're here. Travis is here. I know. I'm sure you got a couple of other friends waiting in the wings. So one of you can come in and see your friend. And we can talk. 
You got five minutes. Make a choice. Knock on the door. The rest of you, fuck off. I'll communicate that as needed. Good. And he uh, sort of opens the office door and then uh, slinks into it and shuts it behind him. I guess I'm just gonna like take it. I, I, I'm just gonna pull out my phone. I'm just gonna call everyone. You know, it'd be probably easier than trying to all like regroup together sure. again. So, uh, I assume everyone heard that. Hey, Rex's phone buzzes like five, six feet away from the shadows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where, was it like an open line? Like, could we hear that whole thing? Could they hear it through the skylight or the roof or wherever they're at? Uh, yeah, I think so. Innocent. Real fucking jokester he is. Innocent. Listen, uh... The only way I say this is I have to go in. Why we you? Can't give him, we're not giving him you. The second he sees you, either a bunch of cops are going to swarm the place or going to fucking kill you. You're not going in. I can protect myself, wants, I can protect the kid. Clearly wants me. Then we'll and figure that out later, but we're not fucking giving you to him. He's already got Abby. I go in, I can protect the kid, I can protect myself. Hopefully I'll just crack their skulls in and get the fuck out of there. It's gotta be me. Yeah, I kind of agree with Sal on this one. Uh, if things go bad, I think it's better that she's in there than the rest of us and Travis I think if you go in there you're just gonna probably make things worse oh what the fuck do you know my point <laughs> the definition of the word is exacerbate uh, I'm not saying that right but that's <laughs> the word that comes up with the definition <laughs> he wants you you don't want to give him what he wants yeah, and he's right. We shouldn't be getting innocent people involved in our bullshit. And oh. as far as I'm concerned, that's what I've done. So I'm going to go get her out. Once Abby's then, out of there, you can where does it end? You want. Fine, whatever. You know what? It doesn't rightly matter because the last time I tried to do something right, one of my friends tasered me in the fucking back. So you know what? I'm going to sit back and I'm going to let you all do this. All right? Whenever you decide I'm allowed to help, I'll fucking help. Travis is going to storm off to a part of the roof. Hold, please. Yeah. Walk over to Travis. I'm scared for her, too. You didn't do this to her. This asshole did. So I'm not going to give him her and you. Just do whatever you think makes the most sense. I'll get her out. Yeah, please. And Rex will text Sal, take out bad guy. Travis, grab Abby? Question mark. Not a black plan. All right. I go in. Rexy, can you give me the uh, the big red button on my phone? shuffles it over all right i go in i get what we need to know i hit the button i take out the two assholes and uh trav jumps in from the roof and gets abby out sounds like a plan i'm here if you need me fair kk 
All right. Slips, you good? Yeah, peachy. All right. That's what we do. And she'll jump off the roof. Whee! Okay. Uh, with everyone else preparing, Sally jumps off the roof. Uh, where do you where do you want to land? Um, probably on the other side, so I can walk around to the front door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, with the rest of you sort of waiting, Sally, with the big red button in your pocket, you jump off the roof, uh, landing and walk around, um, entering the the warehouse. Um, with the office on the other side. Guess I will walk up and knock on the door. Okay. Um, you walk up um, and uh, knock a couple of times on the door. Um, you see, I think through these uh, windows, a little bit of movement on the inside um, and then a um, a figure um who's who's build i think you recognize at this point um walk up to the door take a second um and then open it to let you in i walk in what do i say where's the dog uh you walk in um and this uh this this large man uh sort of shuts the door behind you so he is uh sort of between you and the door um, in the center of the room, you see Abby, um, sort of tied to an, uh, an old office chair. Um, on, on one side, kind of pressed up against the wall, you see an old uh, metal desk, sort of rusted, kind of at its joints with some papers and stuff kind of thrown on top. Um, and then in, uh, in the corner of the room, kind of opposite from the, the door where you are, you see this large uh, black mastiff um just very casually i think kind of laying down on the floor like paws crossed in front of it um just kind of watching i'm just gonna tell you you should have taken the jimmy johns but what do you want well you're not travis but Surprise. That motherfucker ruined my life. And that's my problem and this chick's problem how? He loves you and her. What are you going to give me in return? What am I gonna give you? What am I gonna give you? I let you live. Roll to manipulate. <laughs> this is gonna go great. Okie doke. It's charm, right? Yup. Great. Oh my god. Can yeah, I help by outside yelling freaky X. fresh fast delivery? Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No, I wouldn't give that to me either. It's fine. Unfortunately. Uh listen, the Jimmy John's only goes so far. <laughs> um so um yeah I and mean, Sally you say this um and I I think there is this moment before he speaks where you realize oh, probably not the right tack to take with this uh career criminal um who uh, sort of Good which job. Means, which means I can advance, kick some ass. You can take an improvement and uh, advance some moves if you would like to, which you can do right now um, while Stan sort of uh, flexes his shoulders back a little bit um, and the Mastiff in the corner sort of lets out this low um, growl and he says, oh, Listen, sweetheart.
If I was afraid of death, I would have quit this business a long time ago. What are you giving me for the girl? What the fuck do you want? We're just minding our own business here and you just grab somebody. I'm here. You might have been. Travis Kelly is not. I want him. Anything else? No, that'll do it unless you uh, want to see your little friend bleed out on the office floor. Yeah. <laughs> you really shouldn't have threatened her. And I'm going to hit the go button. And I'm going to attack the motherfucker. <laughs> I will also, at that moment, rush in. Okay. Uh, so, exciting music time. Uh, so, Sally gets the... I don't even remember what all of these sound like. That's exciting. Uh, so, Sally hits the button. Um, and all of you sort of hear this alarm uh, sort of ring out from the uh, the phone in the office. Um, and what uh, what do you do? Uh, I will. Uh, I'll take out the uh, the anime sword. I don't think she's actually gotten to use it yet. I'm gonna take out like nope. the gigantic sword and just go after this guy okay yeah uh sally full-on pulls a uh like final fantasy like buster sword off of her back and just i guess swings at the man uh please roll to kick some ass which i would imagine you just improved i sure did oh, with all those good good XP's. Brother. all righty can we assume that may, may i run at him as well yeah so that gives me a plus one. Nah, uh, you're pretty naturally fast. Sure. Can we can we assume that harm was resolved at some point? Like we rested. I uh, just yeah. realized I still have. Yeah, three you guys harm. did. No, oh, yeah, you got to you got to like, do. Oh god. Uh, a good sleep yeah. until uh, until Ajax's phone call woke you up. So you had some time to rest. Um, so if you had harm, it's gone. Cool. Oh, wow! I only rolled a nine. Okay. I rolled uh, super crappy, but so you and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. Um, so yes, you uh, I think in a, a flash of preternatural movement, on um, sort of both hands pull uh, this big big ass sword off your back and um, sort of charge at Stan. Um, and there is this a uh, big flash i think as you connect as you swing down you like connect with him this big flash of uh sort of greenish blue light um and you hit him and you can see as he like throws his arms up um in front of you you uh, there is this huge like slash across both of his uh forearms where um a little bit of blood um but also this like light um starts pouring out and as this light comes out it sort of reflects back onto you and you feel this like force just like hit you like square in the chest um you're gonna take two harm from so that so i take uh, no harm none probably <laughs> uh but he takes three from he the huge sword three great the sword hits him just so hard uh yes so that happens. Um, the rest of you, uh, Travis, you're on the roof, and the alarm goes off, and this happens. What are you doing? Um, yeah. So I think after Sally and Travis broke, uh, and she went down, I think he slowly made his way down so that he could actually be ready to just kind of pop in. Yeah. Um, and he just burst through the door. Um. His 38 drawn, oh, what doth he see at this instance? Uh, what doth he what, see? The, yeah, I think the Mastiff doing? Is the Mastiff there or was that a... Yeah, the, the oh, yeah. dog is there. Um, I think you see 
um, in the the far corner from the the door that you come through, um, this mm -hmm. mastiff who was like laying on the ground, sort of stand up and take this uh, kind of like aggressive, um, kind of hackles raised mm -hmm. uh, posture. And but I think you enter just in time to see this like flash of green light as Sally brings this giant sword uh, sort of down onto Stan's arm as he tries to like defend himself um, and some like blood um, and also this kind of bright flash of green light sort of come off of him. Okay. So the green comes off of him. Did Do I see anything in like the Mastiff's eyes when that happens? Uh, yeah, I think, I think there is this a very brief kind of flash. It's like sheen across the uh, the dog's eyes as this happens. I believe the following statement is going to come out of my mouth. I would like to shoot the dog, please. <gasps> okay. Roll to kick some ass. Plus, plus tough, mall frere. And also, uh, I would like to invoke my, my new... My new little power here from the mundane playbook. What could go okay. wrong whenever I charge in uh, to immediate danger without hedging my bets? Hold two. Um, yeah, and I, I would think say I you're would... super not hedging your bets. Yeah, right no, I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to... Mm, yeah, you know what? I'm going to hopefully spend it to inflict the harm. Oh my god, that's a five. Christ. All right. Uh, I mean, can I still spend it on that, or how does this play out? Uh, so when you roll to kick some ass, if you fail, mm -hmm. um, you get your ass kicked instead. Oh, so great. You okay, like, suffer I'm... harm or get captured, but don't inflict any harm back. Kid out. Um, so, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Um, I can't. I can't even help because that only brings you to a six. Shit. I will. I will say um, you have the ability to reduce someone's harm suffered by one. Someone can be you. Tight. If you want. Sure. Um, uh, but what am I suffering from this? Well, uh, here's what happens. So um, as Sally sort of connects with Stan, and this explosion of light happens. Travis, you enter. Um, and you turn the gun on the mastiff in the corner. Um, and you aim, you're right on target, you pull the trigger, and uh, everyone, and you're all in uh, close or very close uh, in Sally's uh, case vicinity as this happens. Um, you're in uh, very close uh, proximity to what happens here. Mm -hmm. um, and Travis, you fire the gun, um, and then you can see almost as everything is moving in slow motion. You can see the bullet sort of leave the gun and travel. I mean, directly towards this mastiff in the corner, and then you feel your body sort of seize up and freeze, like you can't move. Um, and in front of you, you see the same thing happen to everyone else. You see um, the bullet sort of in midair just freeze where it is and hang in the air. And you see off to one side sort of Sally um, locked in this like frozen swing downward with her sword with Stan, but no one is moving. And, uh, but you can still see and sort of perceive what is happening around you and you see the dog um standing there in the corner um and the uh the dog's form this, this big mastiff that has sort of been watching everything happen you see it start to glow this like green color and um it's it's almost like this mist is kind of coming off of it and like swirling around it and the dog's form starts to change um and it glows again this like bright uh kind of bluish green color as it shifts within this mist and after a second in front of you standing there um is this humanoid form um sort of bald head um kind of glowing greenish blue eyes and tattoos 
um, kind of covering its head and most of its body, this um, torso. It's essentially wearing uh, very little clothes, sort of a um, kind of leather breeches, um, bare feet, kind of walking toward you across the um, the concrete floor of the office of this warehouse. Um, and these uh, glowing green eyes kind of lock onto you, Travis, uh, for just a second and say, I think you've made a mistake. Yeah, feeling like I miscalculated this. I'm not going to lie. I think you and I need to talk. And that's where we're going to end oh. today's session what? Uh, with this um, creature addressing good old Travis. Ah. So yeah, uh, thank you. Hmm. Everyone, what? Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone out there, our uh, Google friends on Twitch. There were a lot of you today, which I really appreciate, um, who watched what? this with us live. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We hope you had a good time with this um, sort of goofy and very dramatic Monster of the Week game, which we are playing this day. Um, thank you to my players who just keep coming back every couple weeks to live in this space that has come out of my brain. Don't know why you would do that, but you keep doing it because <laughs> it's just so much fun. Um, but yeah, we will. Yeah, welcome to uh, my version of Medieval Times. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, we'll be back in two weeks to see how this resolves. But in the meantime, we have some end of session questions to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first of which be well, let's see. I don't know the session that keep watching. Uh, I used to say that as like a whole sentence, and now it's just like, bleh. did we conclude the current mystery? Yeah. The first one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you did. One for that. Um, did we save someone from certain death or worse? Yeah. The first yep. one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You did. Uh, did we learn something new and important about the world? The first one, yeah. <laughs> Comedy comes in threes. <laughs> we learned how to cure Astriga, and it actually it fucking worked. Yeah. That it did work. work. Yeah. That did work. It just works. Um, priest friend also would like to be a good thing to have. True, true, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Yes, about Travis and his. Yeah. Mom. Learned a lot about Travis, I would say. <laughs> this four yes is a two experience for everyone. Oh my god! Ooh, I love, love, look at me. Me too. Holy shit! Oh, that's my fifth level. <gasps> uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Can I gain an ally, one of my old crew, and just like circumvent this whole thing and make Stan buds with me again? <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Easy. No. <laughs> no. You, you can certainly try. <laughs> Amazing. Stan's twin brother. Flan. Dan. Dan, that's a real name. Nope. Yeah. Flan is better, though. Flan. Great. Flan, yeah. <laughs> so, um,. Yeah, so if you improved, tell me what you took. Um, we are, a lot of you have improved a few times now, so we're getting into the um, exciting advanced improvements, um, which are very, very fun. And there's only so many of those, so we'll. I, I, I have see. advanced kick some ass and investigate a mystery. <clears throat> I advance, uh, manipulate you... a person, and uh, use magic. <laughs> Okay, so for those of you watching at home, some of the advanced improvements of Monster of the Week is you can advance those basic moves to include when you roll a 12 plus, 
uh, you get more and better stuff. So some of our friends here have done that. Um, eventually we're going to have to talk about what happens when you do all of the improvements. <laughs> Uh, cause some of you are getting up there, turns out. Um, but that's her another day when one of your party members hasn't been kidnapped by a man with a dog creature. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody who watched at home. Thank you one more time to my players who I can never thank enough for being incredible. Um, we will be back two weeks from today at 4 p.m. Eastern Times, January 19th. Um, with an LB, aka Abby, aka the expert, um, she'll be back. So we will see uh, how this little uh, mini interlude mystery resolves um, then. But until then, we've got a lot of uh, other fun stuff happening on the channel. On Thursday, we have a new episode of All Myths Are True. It's going to be the finale of this arc before we start a new one with a new game and new characters. It's going to be awesome. Um, on Saturday afternoon, we're playing D&D. On Saturday nights, Sarthia, um, so tune in for that. And then next Sunday, a week from today on the 12th, uh, we have the premiere episode of The Pursuit of the Black Kestrel, our um, Pathfinder mini series that we are doing. So tune in for all of that. Um, and then in between that, we're gonna be uh, playing other games and doing uh, video games and there's there will probably be a one shot in there at some point. There always is. Um, so come hang out with us. Um, come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, follow all of these uh, monster hunters on Twitter because they're doing a lot of stuff um, here on GGK and also outside of it on a lot of different channels. And it's all awesome and good and you're not going to want to miss it. Um, any last words this week? Help. What's 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 the moral of our story, I suppose? Crime doesn't pay. Don't and shoot eat dogs. Jimmy Johns? And eat at Jimmy Johns. Crime doesn't pay. Don't Crime shoot dogs. Crime doesn't pay. Don't also, shoot at dogs. Eat Jimmy Johns. <laughs> but only if they'll sponsor us. Or Looking Luke at you, Jimmy Johns. Loot crate. Or Loot crate. Hey Jimmy Johns. Hey Loot crate. You wanna come this way? So yeah. Um Ugh. We don't need them to have fun. But if you want to, just like let us know. But we don't need them to have fun. Uh, we'll be back two weeks from now. Um, but until then, good game, good hunting, and good night, Internet. Night, Internet. Hi.